Hello to all the meeps and bubbles, my name is Luma and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Let's Play. Let's start today's episode by sending Harold into space. And while Harold is doing the research for us, I will quickly show you what happened in the last episode. In the last episode we cleared out that gigantic area right here, as well as built a more elaborate plastic production system. Barkelius has gotten a couple of upgrades and we prepared an area for today's project. Hello my friends, this is what we want to build today. This is a way overpowered version of a volcano tamer, with which I have discovered some weird game mechanics. So this is going to be one of those episodes where I show you the build first and then how I gathered all the materials and what happened in between. Without further ado, he says after a minute long intro, let's start with the build. Let's place down a little bit of insulation, this part is made out of ceramic, because you want the least amount of heat being transferred to the steam turbines from the volcano. The rest of the insulation will probably just be built out of igneous rock. The steam turbines by the way can be built out of anything that you want. Now we let the dupes deconstruct the ladders and place down a couple more insulation tiles made out of normal materials. After that we will need a little bit of cooling for the steam turbines. You can make this passively cooled, but that depends on the sort of volcano that you have. In this case I just was too lazy to research and place down an aqua tuner setup made out of steel. Next to the aqua tuner of course there is the liquid temperature sensor. I connected both of them up with a cable made from any refined material except for lead. The metal tile here was built from gold and is only there so I can place something else on it in the future. Look what is printed, we got a couple of slug eggs. Could be good for barbecue. Let's print them on Ozista. Before we build that metal tile I almost forgot to fill that with a lot of liquid. So now it is easier because we have a 3 tile high space to place down the bottle lamp here. And while we wait for the dupes to finally come by and finish what we ordered them to do, we can place down the insulated pipes. In an ideal world this would be made out of ceramic but I guess we don't have that at the moment. Then we can place down the buildings that we need for shipping, so the conveyor loader and the auto sweeper made from steel of course, and set the bottle emptier to water and enable auto bottling so that the dupes come by and fill the room with a lot of water. A good amount of water would be 10 kg to 100 kg per tile. Since this is not self powered we need outside power so the big cable can be connected up to our turbines. What this does is, every power that we are producing is being put back into our main power grid and the power that we are using, for example to power the aqua tuner as well as the auto sweeper and the conveyor loaders, is being taken from the grid. I did this so we can use a regular conductive wire inside of the steam chamber. In order for the material taken from the volcano to be output at a decent temperature, we need to temperature control it, hence the conveyor shutoff and the conveyor temperature sensor. Since I couldn't really remember if they can overheat in the new DLC, I made them out of steel. And because I did not have enough steel, I went to the main planetoid and sent some over. Let's take a look at what is printed. More plastic. That is very helpful on this planetoid. Okay, I do think we have enough water now, so we can deconstruct the bottle emptier and place down three metal tiles made out of gold. When a volcano spits out material, the auto sweeper will pick it up and put it into the conveyor loader. The material then needs to rotate inside of the steam chamber until it is cold enough. That's why we have the conveyor temperature sensor as well as the shutoff inside of the steam chamber. In order for this to function properly, the conveyor rails need to make a closed loop. Sadly, you can't really see it behind the auto sweeper but the conveyor loader was not connected to the loop until yet. Now that we bridged it onto and gave it a direction, every material that will end up on the loop will cycle until it is cold enough. In the background I changed the bridges for a better material. Now we can give it a high priority and connect up the aqua tuner to the sensor with an automation cable made out of iron. Same goes for the temperature sensor and the conveyor shutoff. Let's keep on going with the build. I'm going to drop off a little bit of water in here so that the water can be cooled by the aqua tuner as well as the dropped material right here. That's why the metal tiles are there. So we can create a full water tile and it transfers the heat better to the material. Now I wanted to hook the inside of the chamber up to our electronic grid. That is why I'm using two joint plates to create a vacuum inside of them so that they don't transfer the heat inside of the steam room. Also the large transformer can finally be placed down. Then I noticed that I miscounted by one tile and I need to rip out the metal tiles again and place them one to the right. Same goes for the joint plate and the material drop off on top. 
After a while we accumulated enough ceramic to build a couple more pipe pieces. Every pipe that is in the steam room and not in the walls should be made out of ceramic. The pipes that run through the wall are not that important and can be made out of any other materials. I need to produce a little bit more aluminum. What is printing? More Dracos, okay. While we wait for our duplicates to finish the construction, why not press that subscribe button? Meanwhile, the duplicates dropped 200 kilograms of water. Now another bottle with another 200 kilograms. Now we can stop it and set it to disable auto bottling and let the duplicates finish their tasks. Now the overflow from the aqua tuner can be bridged onto the green output pipe, then over the steam turbine output pipes and the aluminum that I ordered the duplicates to produce will be used in front of the steam turbines to help cool the water down that they are slightly submerged in. The cold water then will cool down the debris that is dropped inside of the tile to the right here. Because we don't have enough aluminum at the moment, let's close off this loop first with the insulation tiles. Maybe another bridge right here and increase the priority to 9. A whole cycle later and we finally have enough aluminum to close off the loop. After that has been taken care of, we can set the values for the temperature sensors. I want to cool down the aluminum from the volcano to around 130 degrees Celsius before dropping it into the water. The water, by the way, will be cooled down to 1 or 2 degrees, so I'm setting this to 15. Back at Bacillus and our Volcano Tamer, we pretty much are done with the build. We only have to fill in our loop. Sadly, I just have water and salt water. Come on game. I just have water and salt water, which both don't have that much of a temperature range. Polluted water is way better in that aspect. But for now, let's use the clean water. That's why I prepared a pipe right here from our input, which is filtering the salt water into clean water. Then we can connect it up and fill the loop. Then we can cut all the pipes that we don't need, close this off, collect all the material that shouldn't be in there and try to research or analyze the volcano. I'm not sure if it is the left on the right tile that should be removed without the volcano being able to spit out its hot material. So that's gonna be a gamble. While we are at it, why not get another pipsqueak? Okay, now that this is almost done, let's fill it with water. Water here, connect it up, fill the loop, set this to a temperature that the water is not at the moment, so it's something unrealistic, only if above 100. Deconstruct this. So the loop is now filled. Now we wait for the dupes to deconstruct that tile, that bridge. Then we set this to a more realistic value, like 15, so the water is almost at freezing temperature if it runs through the aqua tuner. Or maybe like 16. 16 should be enough, just to be safe. So if above 16, cool it down. And now we need to analyze the thing and place down two temp shift plates, probably made out of a material that we have lying around, like gold here. And we need one, uh, I guess it's this tile. Only have enough for, for one here. And the other one can be made out of either aluminum, but this will melt super quickly or just gold amalgam or steel. What a waste of steel. Well, anyways, and analyze this quickly. I guess this is the important tile, so maybe not do this first. No! Ah, uh, dupes. Maybe the mass of the water is enough that the duplicates have enough time to analyze the volcano and then close this off. Here in Bacillus, the research is still ongoing. Aluminum ore has already been dropped, but the water was able to handle it. Almost done. Almost done. Come on, Rowan, you can do it. Finally. Nice. Okay. He peed himself, by the way. Now we can close this off. Yes. Do we have ceramic left? Okay, nice. Then we can make this tile out of ceramic. Make this quick again. Set this to zero. Set this to one. And then we can connect up the power. Like so. And then let me explain what I did here. Ah, uh, I missed something. This could overheat before this turns into steam. That would be quite annoying, by the way. Let's hope this does not happen. Okay, so now let me explain this. First off, classic aqua tuna setup. We need to cool our steam turbines and we also want to cool our 
Why is there ice? Okay, let's collect that quickly. Okay, I froze it to my minus 100 and how is... How? How did that happen? I've never seen ice this cold. Okay, where was I? Our steam turbines are cooled via this loop from the water. The water is 16 degrees or the aqua tuna substracts 14 degrees, so it's 2 degrees cold. The material gets looped around after being picked up by the auto sweeper and if it is cold enough, 130 degrees or lower, it will be sent upwards to this tile. And this tile, there is a full water tile so it is submerged and will be cooled. The cooled material then can be picked up by the duplicates. The conveyor loader is set to everything because everything that is dropped in here should get picked up. We have a very high concentration of steam. Well, at the moment we don't for some odd reason. Only 17 kilograms per tile. Even though I filled in, I guess, around 400 kilograms per tile here. So something went wrong. Maybe it is ice right here. Future me here, I was trying to figure out what happened here, but I still don't have a clue to be honest. Maybe the hot steam in the top right corner gets instantly condensated to ice and drops through the wall inside of our water. But that does not explain why the ice is at minus 180 degrees. How is that even possible? So until we know what happened here exactly, probably it is best to not rebuild this in your own base. But if we take a look at this from another viewpoint, we just created a machine that can turn hot steam into super cold ice for some odd reason and produce power while doing that. Well, let's get back to the explanation. The power comes from the outside and the power generated also gets fed outside again. The large power transformer stores 4000 joules and transfers it to everything that is inside. I wanted the large power transformer inside because it is producing 1000 DTUs of heat. This here is so we have a vacuum lock so the heat from inside is not transferred outside as you can see right here. Where is this ice coming from? This is, uh, this is really weird. I could drop in more water through this vent right here. I think I'm going to do that. Yeah. Let me do something like this. Set this to high priority again, not those. Let's place down temp shift plates made out of ice so we can get rid of that stuff. This is better. Okay, this should be fine now. Let's cup it right there. Oh. And it will be dormant in 2.4 cycles. So let's hope that this water will turn to steam, otherwise the power transformer could overheat. Ice again. Okay, something is off. Something is really off. I created a very useful bug which I do not know where it came from. Maybe this tile here. The steam is transferred through the wall and connecting up this tile? I'm not sure. If you have an idea, post it in the comments down below, guys. By the way, this is how our main base looks at the moment. <laughs> take a look at this. What a horrible mess of statues. And take a look at this. This is a nice decor overlay, at least in the upper parts of the base. And now to other stuff that we have missed while we were building the tamer. Here on the main asteroid I'm switching between the interplanetary launcher and the research station so that we can research in the time we are not using that thing and we can send over, for example, Atmos suits to Bacchelios so the dupes can work faster in the vacuum environment. So dupes, did you deliver my suits? They did, nice. One suit at 200 and... Mary, wh what are you doing there? Go to sleep. One suit at 200 kilograms. So we need a second suit and then we can send it over. Someone made a mess. Harold. Harold is researching a rocket, so he is allowed to make a mess. How is his oxygen? Still fine. The dupes delivered a second suit, so we now we can activate that thing. Check it being transported. Those are a lot of Atmos suits, that should be enough. Let's see, five Atmos suits. That should be enough. 
This is going to take a while, so we can start and go over to Bacilius. Dead Masuts will arrive here. <laughs> take a look at this. We got Paku again, just like in the beginning of the game. So let's print the Paku and let him drop down into our salt water, water pool. So in order to not have them go to the left, we probably need to close this off pretty quickly. So something like this could help. Let's see if we are quick enough. Nice. The Paku seemed to be not the brightest. Okay, now they drop down. For the duplicates on the main asteroid, it may be time for some totally unnecessary decor. Maybe not so unnecessary if you take a look at our red spots here and the empty spots right there. So let's go to the furniture and place down some of those large sculpting blocks made out of granite because this gives a plus 20% decor and spam it everywhere. Maybe even in between here. So the dupes have a lot of stuff to do and are not idle again. <laughs> we can also spam that stuff uh, in our power shaft and maybe reduce our negative decor penalty everywhere where we don't need the power transformers. Harold has reached his maximum stress level again, so it is time to bring him back, as always. Yes, Harold, we know. There we go. So, where's our Harold? Let's not make him the pilot and see what happens. There he is. Bright and cheerful, apparently. Ooh. Ah, he's going to stress eat a little bit. Here on Bacilius I'm going to rearrange the mess hall a little bit because I forgot the recreational building, like I always do. So I'm placing down a party line phone here by deconstructing one of those large sculpting blocks. As you can see Bird right now is being stressed a little bit because if we take a look at his skills you can see that where's Bird, here's Bird, he needs three more points of moral uh, game. Okay. For some odd reason the game froze for a little bit, but now we are back and I placed down the party line phone as well as a flower pot. So let's see what the dupes are doing at the moment. Bird is constructing our cables that we need for the suits. So let's place them down right now if we do have the time for that. Atmosuit checkpoint right here and space for two suits. And then I'm going to close this off and disallow it for the duplicants, so I'm preparing a door for that reason right now. Maybe one of those closing this off right here. I also want to get rid of all this chlorine down here. That's why I prepared a gas pipe as you can see here hooked up to the gas pump which I'm going to connect to the outlet which is in space. So we can cut this right here, build this with a higher priority, switch again to the piping and this pipe here is going to fill our suits with fresh oxygen. So we need another pump place it on somewhere here and then I need a mechanical filter so only the oxygen will get transported down. By now you should know how the mechanical filters work. Let's see where I have space for that. Probably here could work. Here we are again so let's go to the ventilation, place on a liquid valve made out of any material, doesn't really matter. Then we need to check the flow direction. This should be from green to white counter flowing against the pump. So if this is flowing this direction, this is flowing down like so. Then connect it up with two bridges and set the valve to dot one grams a second. Let's wait for the duplicants, make this a high priority again. Let's see what is printed. We got a little bit of bristleberry, always useful. A pufflet, maybe not so useful. Devon, who is a slow learner but a good digger. And a bunny, kitchen manners, decorator, destructive. No, we can take the bristleberry. On Bacillus, you can see that instead of working, the dupes are on their phones. On the main asteroid, Harold has come down again, as you can see in the top left corner. So, up he goes again. 
Off you go, Harold. <laughs> and he immediately went to sleep, as you can see. Back on Bakilos, we can take a look at our Atmosuit setup. The Atmosuits haven't been delivered yet, sadly. The oxygen is coming from this filtration system. The oxygen is being sucked up here. I placed down a signal switch so I could control the electrolyzer so we don't get hydrogen in there. But I forgot to check on that. So we got hydrogen in our piping system. Luckily, if I see it correctly, we do have oxygen in here. Oxygen, oxygen and oxygen. So our mechanical filter loop should be primed correctly. Now we just have to connect up the oxygen output, which is the white part of the valve, to the pipe that leads to the atmosphere docks. Therefore I'm rearranging the piping a little bit, deconstruct one storage bin and place down the liquid vent that mostly vents out the hydrogen inside of our base. And lastly replace the two tiles that are filled with carbon dioxide and chlorine. Now the clean oxygen can fill the suits. Today we have a special little section. In honor to my very first Patreon, I'm going to choose a duplicant. This time's lucky Patreon is going to be Adrian. And Adrian wanted to have a Sparkle Streaker. We got lucky and have a Meep with a Sparkle Streaker. So let's set this to Adrian and welcome him to the base. Hello Adrian and welcome to the base. Because Sparkle Streaker droops are super useful, if they are very happy, we are going to give our Adrian a nice little housing, a good diet, and he's going to get this cool vest, if I can find him in the list, by the way, here. Also, let's go to the schedule, make a separate schedule for the new duplicate, and give him a lot of downtime. You can see the moral boost of the downtime. But this is hard limited to around 5 slots. If you add a 6 slot, it will do nothing more. So we can do 5 slots of leisure activity. Cancel one of the night slots and one more work slot in the morning. For the living arrangements, I'm thinking of something like this. The first nights will be a little bit unpleasant. But then a nice granite floor, a fancy bed and probably a couple of plants will be placed in his room. Also, since we added another duplicate, we need a couple more plants to supply us with food. He also doesn't have to sleep on the floor while we build this, because we have the rocket and there are a couple of cots in it. Here on the main planet, I take a look at this horrible monstrosity. I don't really like the statues, because it's all the Greek dupe poses, I'm not sure. I'm more of the plant guy, but I think it's a very good way to keep the dupes busy. And we do get a nice decor bonus out of this, so maybe we should place it down here to counter all this negative decor. Back at Bakilios, Adrian is digging away his bedroom, so why not give him the digging skill? And take a look at that moral boost, we are at 26 moral. If a duplicate exceeds their moral requirements by over 8 points, there's a 2% chance that a duplicate may wake up with an overjoy reaction. This chance slightly rises up to 20 excess moral. This would be equal to a duplicate waking up and having a 5% chance of being overjoyed. It took me a little switching forth and back again, until I noticed that I haven't set the destination again. That is why the atmosuits haven't been delivered to Barkhelios. The atmosuits that we are using right now, by the way, are from our interior of the rocket. So if I finally set the destination to Barkhelios, we should get our suits. If you are not like me and deconstruct and construct that building all the time, you don't have to worry about such things. Let's see what is printed. We got more seats, that is useful because I well, used up every seed on this planetoid. Back on Bakilius, you can see who now has the finest bedroom. This year, in the background, this is all pixel packs. So this is a massive bonus of over 240 decor. Even more, probably. And we can beef that up even more, with more plants. The pixel packs are powered through this cable hooked up to the power transformer down here and the automation signal comes from the switch which is set to green. In order to set the color for the green or red automation signal you just have to choose one and place it down inside of the boxes. On means the colors from the green, off means the colors from the red. I personally like the black because it looks like a night sky. Ha! Nice! We managed it! As you can see our Adrian is a sparkle streaker now. Okay, maybe I should have put in a little bit more oxygen down here. Otherwise, this is pretty cool. Okay, instead of building and rebuilding this all the time, I think I'm going to place the rocket platforms a little bit to the right. So why not send this into space quickly, anywhere, begin the launch sequence, wait for our stressed herald, and then we can land it right here, deconstruct this platform and place the second platform a little bit to the right here.
Who is scolding? Mary is scolding. Why? Oh, okay. She used a lot of hot material and now she's cooking herself by standing in front of the statues. Off you go to the infirmary. And while we are here, let's take a look. Oh, Nicola is being scalding too. Let's take a look at the temperatures, was what I wanted to say. And let's take a look at our statue progress. I pretty much spammed them everywhere where we had space. Sparkle Striger, Adrian to the rescue. And he's gone. What are you doing? You were supposed to open the supply drops. Now go back there and get us the materials. Nice, okay. There he comes to the rescue. A fine portion of supply soup. What the heck happened here? I just read building broken and checked on the solar panel. There, There's a whole lot missing on this planet. What the freaking heck? Did this explode or something? Is that a new feature that stuff can explode? What the? I only know that from the, from the um, atomic generator. I don't even know what was here in the first place. What happened here? This is so weird. Our research station is completely gone. Also on Bacillus you can see that I made a mess out of our oxygen because I forgot to deconstruct this cable right here. So our electrolyzer was deactivated. But as the pressure increases our base will look beautiful and oxygenated again. What do we have here? A shine nymph or a couple of dupes? No, I don't want any of that right now. But what you might like is this beautiful short that I put on the screen right now. So make sure to take a look at that. Love you guys and Luma out.